Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Monday Night Raw Review. We start things off as I said was gonna start off. Rob Beck wanted revenge on those three guys that attacked him. And I still don't know their names whatsoever. At least I don't know how I pronounce them. That's the first thing happened. He went revenge on those three guys. Then out of nowhere, here come Vicky Guerrero on a spoiler again. Saying she likes how I beat on people. And she sends out ten side to do the work. Now, as I already knew, Rob Bad was going to win that match. As I called around the money. And that's what he did. He beat Tenzai to a pulp and won the match. Then, as things go on, Paul Hain was backstage delivering to see a punk that he was going to give him a celebration party in the ring later on tonight. So then afterwards, it was a match between Kofi Kingston, the Boom Boom Kid, and Wade Barrett. And now Wade Burr had his sights on the Anaconda Championship. But, as I suspected, that Wade Burr was going to go in that ring and beat Kofi Kingston. And that's what he did. And now that he did beat Kofi Kingston, he will get a title shot opportunity. Possibly at TLC, which I'm guessing. Now, as I was right on that one too. Well, I was happy that... uh. After that was over, that match, Caitlyn had a match with Roxana, the one who attacked her from behind that Survivor Series, and she all she wanted was revenge on Roxana. I mean, I don't have no clue why Roxana did that, but I guess her and he got like a little thing going on or something like that. I don't know, but the good thing is Caitlyn got revenge on Roxana tonight, and she did pull up that victory, which I'm glad for. Um, after that, Antonio Cesaro, who was still the U.S. champion, had a match with Bros. Clay, the Funkasaurus, that y'all know. Well, I'm pretty sure I won't, I won't call my mom, but she'll just come and slap me. But, um, they two went head to head, and all chief was sitting there watching the whole thing, trying to see if he can find a way to beat Cesaro, trying to see if he got any more maneuvers going on. And as impressive as Cesaro looks, he looked impressive again tonight. He pulled it off again. He beat the Funkasaurus again, lifting him up. Like, I mean, can you imagine how much he weighs just lift him up with that neutralizer to go bang? Pull him down. So, after that match was over, then here comes Vicky again. Said she got more evidence on AJ and John Cena, and it turns out that she did. And she brought out these two people, like I don't know who they are. Pretty sure neither of you don't either. But um, they said they was eyewitnesses to the whole thing. Like they seen, like one scene, like the lady seen AJ and John Cena in the back of the restaurant and talking, whispering to each other ears and stuff. And the guys seen AJ and John Cena in the in the car. Who knows what they was doing in that? But I'm pretty sure we all got our minds on something. You know what I mean? But um, then after that was over, hey, um, Vicky, not yet, Vicky was about to present more evidence, and then here comes John Cena to the rescue again. And then he tried to, and she, and he confronted Vicky like, why is she still trying to screw them? And then John Cena did the biggest thing that neither of us suspect. He just took his hat off, grabbed AJ, and gave it a kiss of a lifetime. But I'm pretty sure everyone is still talking about. And it's a pride thing about it, when he was finished, she kissed him back. Now, that could mean something. Like, maybe that's true that they all got something behind the scenes. Or maybe that was just to get Vicky off track a little bit. Who knows? But then, while they was kissing... Dolph Ziggler comes to the ring and starts beating up on John Cena. And then, John Cena and Charlie Lifflin do the AA. And then, Dolph Ziggler runs. Then, Dolph Ziggler runs out the ring. And he hurt his uh, ankle. They say he has a, a torn, malicious something. And who knows how long he's going to be out for. He is going to be out anyway. But, I'm pretty sure he's going to be okay. But, um, 
once that was over, there was a match between Randy Orton and Alberto, and those two still still going there with their little who's the real apex brother thing. And of course, we all know it's Randy Orton as he comes up with the victory, but that match was incredible. Like, I'm pretty sure y'all haven't seen that. You guys see that match is incredible. But um, once that was over, Great Khali had a match with Primo Epico. And I say that's a swallow. I mean, come on now. <laughs> it's Khali. The big Great Khali. But then there's a little incident where Hornswell come out in the ring with flowers. And, and he was about to give the flower to Rosa Mendez. And then all of a sudden, the flowers had water spread all over the men, and she got pretty angry. And I was just like, okay, okay what's up with that moment? <laughs> like, I had no idea what that moment was for. I guess it just put Hornswoggle on TV again, I guess. But, um, yeah, so once that was over, Miz had a match with Dave Otunga. Now, he didn't look so awesome, but he came out with the victory. I'm pretty sure he would, because he's awesome. Hello. <laughs> And after that was over, it was a Sheamus came out and called out the Big Show. He won. He won the hands on Big Show. Big Show came out saying, "I want nothing to do with you, Sheamus. You are beat me to an inch with the chair you got in your hand." And Sheamus said, "Why don't you come ahead? Let's fight right now." And all of a sudden, here comes Damian Sandow coming out because those Sheamus and uh, Damian had a match scheduled to fight against each other. And Damien actually put up a fight. But though do we know Shane was getting right high at the end, delivered that big massive bro kick and came out with the victory. Yeah. So, once that was over, AJ was in the back. She wanted Vicky to um it was like or she wanted Vicky to help John Cena or something like that. And then she was like, No. I'm not going to do nothing about John Cena. I'm not going to help him. Then AJ said, you're not going to do it. I will do it. So, once that was over, AJ Stone's in the men's locker room confronting Dolph Ziggler. And Dolph Ziggler had some mean, nasty words say to AJ. Like some mean, nasty words. I was like, wow. Then all of a sudden, AJ just went crazy on Dolph Ziggler. Just went pop, 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 pop. And then that was John Cena to the rescue. And that's when Dolph Ziggler hitting on him. And those two swinging it out, going at it. And then Dolph Ziggler attacking the injured, that injured knee. Of Cena, and then that was it. Just straight tackle John Cena on in, in, the, in the men's bathroom. I'm pretty sure that was a mess in there, but it actually looked kind of clean. But those two going out in the bathroom, and that little fight or whatever, and they were just and that's when John Cena suffered that torn malicious. Well, he already had it, but then it got worse after that. So after that incident, it was a match between Sin Cara, Mysterio. And the team hell no. And those two going there, body were flying everywhere. Well, all except Kane. I mean, of course, you almost see a big guy flying and he just go, just kind of hurt himself, you know. <laughs> but, uh, then, then it was a funny thing because the primetime players watching the match and I was like, I got funny going just in the field. And that's exactly what they did in the match. When looking like that team hell no about to pull out the victory. They came storming in the match. I guess they feel like they're the real tag team champions. They should be tag team champions. I'm not sure about that, but that's how they feel. And Team Hell No and Team Sin Cara and Mysterio worked together and beat those guys into a play poke. And that was the after that. So, after that, then there was CM Punk and Paul Heyman backstage talking about the gotcha celebration outside the ring of waiting. CM Punk was smiling happy. So, that's when Paul Heyman was out in the ring. He was telling everybody to celebrate CM Punk for his 365 days champion. And then he introduced CM Punk out in the ring. CM Punk came out into the ring and was celebrating that he's the champion. He's still the champion for 365 days. And he feel like he can beat almost anybody like Stone Cold or Rob Brett and the house, Shawn Michaels, all of them. You name them. Anybody. So... Once he start bragging about all that, then there goes Rob back coming to crash the party. He want to get on Punk, and then those three guys came again and attacked Rob back. The same three guys that we wondering what is going on with those guys. I mean, where everyone's saying those three guys is a scheme and had some sort of scheme with Paul him and CM Punk. And I'm pretty sure that it could. If you see how it ended, the three guys did not go after CM Punk or him.